us. Mm -hmm. Did our families agree with everything we did? Absolutely not. But what we did is that we made sure we were on the same page. Yeah. And then as long as we were on the same page, they had to make a choice. <laughs> No, I'm for real. They no, I'm laughing because I'm just thinking about some of the. And we were okay with that. We were like, "What are like?" Literally, we had a conversation like, "What are our absolute like things that we do not, we're not going to budge on." This is the B side, B side, B side. The marriage. This is the B side, B side, B side. The marriage. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the B Side of Marriage podcast. I'm your host, Rashonda, and this is my husband and co host, Jason. And here at the B side, we talk about everything related to marriage. The good, the bad, the real, the, the A, A and, and the, the B side. side. And if you're checking us out on YouTube, please be sure to comment and subscribe. And or if you're listening on any of the audio platforms, please be sure to rate and review so that others can help find the show. As well, follow us on Facebook at the B Side of Marriage and on Instagram at B Side of Marriage. Alright, that's it. Yeah. All right, let's begin. Okay, so we'd like to start every episode off with um, our first segment is where we share an A or B side moment um, from our week. So Jay, go ahead. Uh, being that we, we didn't record last week, mm -hmm. I guess I'll, I'm going to, my A side is going to be not last week, but the week before that. <laughs> okay. I'm just A. Um, so my A side was just actually being at my niece's wedding. Um, oh, you know, okay. this celebration of her union to her husband. Um, so it was, like I said, it was really good. Um, got choked up, yes, you did. held it together for a while, but then I didn't. So, but that's, that's my A side. And actually also is that that was my, f the first wedding our children got to go to. And at first it was a little, I guess, hesitant, but it seemed like they enjoyed itself. You mean at the actual ceremony or at the taking wedding. the trip? Because, man. I'm talking more on the ceremony. Okay. <clears throat> so, I think I think they enjoyed themselves, you know, started dancing and stuff like yeah. that, so. Yeah, uh, it, it was really nice seeing, like, the kids all dressed up, and especially the boys. The boys, man, if they could wear PJs every day, they would be wearing them. Mm -hmm. And so to see them in suits, then everybody all dressed up and cleaned. It was, it was really cute. <laughs> yeah, and everybody um, everybody talking about, oh, they shop, they shop. That's yes, what I was getting all night, yes. so. And then they were really great during the ceremony, for right. sure. Like, quiet. I really, I honestly was able to forget that they were there. Um, <laughs> and really just be in the moment, like, you know, be in the ceremony. So yeah. it was good. What was funny is that at the end, our youngest, <laughs> as, their, as the bride and groom in the wedding, bridal party are exiting, he lets, a, lets out this big <sighs> breath like he had been holding it in the whole time. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. you did good. You, you made it all the way through. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. What about you? Mine's a beat side. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, so it's just, man, I like to have a clean house. You know? We pay to have someone help clean the house every so often. And I just would really like to at least get 12 hours <laughs> to enjoy the first sense of <sighs> a clean house. That is not the case with kids around. Literally, they're like, as soon as one room is cleaned, they've come in and they've trashed it. It literally like they just took a garbage can that was full and just go, hey. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, can your mom just enjoy <laughs> a couple of hours of clean? Like literally, we went out to eat so I wouldn't have to cook because I really don't like when I have to mess up a clean kitchen. Mm-hmm. And then come, I was like, what, what are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking? So yeah, so just being able to really enjoy a clean house would, it would be great. But that's not the case. That's not been my testimony for a while now. Um, it's, yeah, it's just 
Oh, and they're not even all teenagers yet, so. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why. Well, I figure as they get older, then um, if they want their rooms to be cleaned, it needs to be clean because you know. So a lot. I'm pretty sure a lot of women can relate to with me on this. <clears throat> is that we do a pre-clean before our house uh, <laughs> cleaner comes, and so yeah, so they will have to do a pretty decent pre-clean, and so that I don't want anybody thinking that we're messy people. So even the cleaning people. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but I don't want them like. Mm, that house over there. Yeah. So yeah, so they'll have to do a pre-clean. They have to basically earn the right to be able to have the house cleaner come in and clean up their rooms. But yeah, so. All right, so um, next is our P2P share, where we share something we are listening to, reading, et cetera, right? <laughs> et cetera. Et cetera. So I'll start with you. So. Do you, oh. have, do you have a P2P share? I don't. <laughs> Simple as that. I don't. Um, only because school has started again for me. All of the things that I said I was going to do beforehand have not gotten done. All the things I was going to... Um... Oh, I do have something. I, as I'm like rambling on. Um, this is all for... This is, this is this P2P share is really for the churchy people. Um, if you like kind of church drama, um, check out Kingdom Business. Oh. Uh, it's a show on BT Plus. <laughs> um, you get to see Yolanda Adams in yes. rare form. But it's, really, it's, it's, it's a good show. The first episode and a half probably was a little slow or a little Tyler Perry-ish. But it does pick up after that, where you get caught up in the story and stuff. So um, you get you get so, caught up, caught up. I'm not so yeah, gonna so lie. I think that's a, a um, if you have BT BT plus, check that out. Yeah, it's it's a good show. You will, I guarantee. I, I, I'm saying I'm guarantee you gonna get sucked in. It's <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah, and it, it's like <laughs> eight episodes, eight nine episodes, whatever. But I was able to binge it because I was late to the party. Was it? I don't remember. I watched it. So Anyways, long I watched it all in one day. So. So and I'll just I'm not gonna give anything away. But when you watch a show, and somebody that you that you like you feel like you know them like you like you family. Goes left and you really like I can't stand this person. That means they did a good job. Yes, I didn't think. <laughs> yes. This was I don't want to give didn't it away. I feel like yeah. was a good actor until. Oh show. So, all right. So that's mine, though. <laughs> I don't have I don't have one. That's why I kind of threw it at you. See. Well. Baby. So then you gonna pay back off for mine? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any one. Actually, well, I'll just I I, I guess a P to P share. Okay. Uh, my wife has been you know, kind of get me to listen to Maverick City more and more, and we actually went to a concert oh. this past weekend. So. If you know their new Freedom album is pretty dope, so Kingdom, you mean? What is that? Freedom. He said Freedom. Is it? Because one of the lyrics is like. Oh, that's why freedom. I was like, okay, I'm sorry, Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, but it was like we went to a concert. It was good, and Kurt Franklin was there, and it was like I said, it was, it was really good, really good, really. It's good. really good. Yeah. That's true. Oh, also, uh, yeah. If you're able to catch them, um, I don't know where they are within their tour. But yeah, please check them out. Um, it was amazing the crowd that they were able to um, pack in. <laughs> well, yeah, that that were, that they, were coming yeah. to uh, see them. It was like you would have thought it was a secular act, like mm -hmm. either R and B, pop, whatever, because it, people were in the place. They were in the building. And it was just really great, like, to just kind of see, like, especially because their album was about kingdom, mm -hmm. like king, kingdom building, and just to see, like, truly when they have a song where it's like, if you want to see what heaven looks like, just mm -hmm. look at you and me, mm -hmm. and you can really see what heaven will look like. It was yeah. people from all denominations, all uh, ages. It was just great. And then, you know, worshiping God and celebrating, yeah, who he is. And yeah, people all the way up good. to 80 years old. Yes. 80 years old there. So it was really good. Yeah, so, so yeah. 
So, so I guess what are we talking about today then? All right, so what are we talking about today? We are talking about family of origin, oh. but we're gonna say wedding edition because you know we're uh, we are blessed to have um, a niece and a nephew who are getting married this year. Yep. Uh, with everything opening back up, with the world kind of opening back up, um, a lot of people are actually like doing the. Um, the ceremonies, the receptions yeah. that they wanted to do if they did get married during the um, quarantine yeah. and when the pandemic was really uh, intense. Um, so, so yeah, so we want to just talk about this and how family of origin has an impact on uh, your relationship, your yeah. marriage, your wedding, like all the things. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so that's where we're at. And also, too, we want to talk about. Um, this as well because you know inflation is real oh. this is 2022 um everything is more expensive so we want to just talk about how some kind of sometimes how family pressures can cause you to do things um that are more expensive or whatever so we're just gonna just talk about it all okay all right okay so i don't know where we go but we'll anyways, see. what is family of origin to you Oh, I was like, I didn't know you were throwing it to me. Yes, um, I to. So family origin is kind of basically the way I look at it is your experiences of how kind of like how you was raised, the people you was around, and how that impacts your relationships. That's, I guess, that's how I look at it. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's a uh, common culmination yeah, there we that's, go that's i got it, it out <laughs> um, of just like your family uh like your uh your inner circle mm -hmm. like uh so like if your grandparents were really active in your family because it's not it's not necessarily your household correct a lot of people think oh these are the people like who were in my house no not necessarily these are people who had constant um you had constant interaction with so it could actually even be friends um, like family friends who played, uh, who were constantly around in your life, who mm -hmm. helped shape uh, just kind of like how you guys behaved and function as a family. Okay. And so, uh, so oftentimes I know when people are getting married um, or getting engaged, not even before they even get married, it's just like, oh, um, that was like families in the past, especially if you have. Um, some negative experiences or negative relationships with some of your core family members. Mm -hmm. People be like, oh, kind of, so they kind of use like their marriage as like an escape. Okay. But we have to remember that even though we may have had some negative experiences or we have relationships uh, with uh, core family members that are not like ideal, that still help shape our mindset our behaviors our expectations which is why it's very important that uh, that family of origin is addressed and, and talked about with your with if you're some, if you're dating someone who's seriously or engaged or you know or you're um even if you're already married you still need to talk about these things because uh family of origin helps to um your family of origin help create the person that you are today. So there is, for example, like there might've been something that happened in, um, it could be like, for me, a funny one would be, my mom always made my dad's plate. Okay. So he was always, cause he was the head of the household. So she always made his plate and um, served, like he always ate first, like got served first, I shouldn't say ate. Uh, he got served first and I was just like, no, I'm too. I'm not old school like that. That I like. I'm not gonna be old school like that. So I'm going to. Um, I'm like Jay. Jay's a grown man. If he wants to eat, he go make a plate. I, especially if I cook, psh, go make a plate, eat whatever. So yeah. So I was just like, you know, you're an adult man. You can go make your plate. Blah blah blah. So I was just like, I'm not doing that. But that one thing, although minor is something that kind of said, like had an impact on me. Like I didn't like, I, I don't know. I guess I was just too independent. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's, yeah. So that was kind of its impact on me. It, it was like, I'm going to be more independent that I don't have to be making plates for people. Like I'm a, I don't even like making our kids plates, especially now that they're of age. Gotcha. So it's just like, this is something that I don't want to 
introduced into our relationship. So, okay. so yeah, so minor stuff like that, and it can be major stuff, okay? Um, but family of origin is important also to because we want to build the opportunity for a uh, more empathy and a stronger connection with each other. Okay. Meaning, if I know your story, mm-hmm. um, I know what you grew up with, or in or not, um, like kind of your environment, then I can I can better empathize, especially if I didn't experience it myself. Yeah. So I can better empathize with you. I can understand also to like some triggers. I don't like using that word because that's very it's, it's popular it's, thing now. But like I can understand things that um, situations up. that may impact you mm-hmm. more so than others. Uh, as well as because of that, I feel like even though because we've talked at length about things. Um, Things that I haven't experienced, but I feel like because the way you shared, because you, uh, they were important to you. Mm-hmm. Like I feel a strong connection with you for things. Gotcha. Which is okay. like you know the sci-fi movies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Those are important to you as far as your relationship with your father. Yeah. So yeah, so that's why like I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like that's why family of origin is important to discuss. Mm-hmm. You have anything you want to add? Um, honestly, when I was, as we was talking, it made me just think about, um, I'll say it like this. Family origin is like your carry on. I don't know why this came in my head. Okay. It's like your carry on. So like you got, you're going on a trip together with your, I would say with your newly, your newly wife, right? Go on a family trip together. I mean, a, fam- a vacation for both of you guys. Mm-hmm. And you guys decide, okay, I don't want to bring everything with me. I'm just going to bring a carry-on. So you bring the carry-on, you get to your destination. You, you, you know, you open up, you both open up your suitcase. And then what you're kind of, you know, the way I look at it is like, you guys are sharing, you're opening that suitcase and you're sharing those things with yeah. one another. So it's like, okay, like, for, like you know, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to wear this the first day. I'm going to wear this the second day. It's, that's, I don't know why that came in my head like that, but that's kind of like, you know, you're sharing with one another those things that are important to you. So, like, yeah, you bring in, you know, whatever shorts that you like, things like that. So you're sharing. So I don't know why that came in my head like that, but that's, that's how I was thinking about it. So Yeah, I, and I think uh, that also plays into, like, your expectations, Mm-hmm. And your values and your behavior, like within your relationship, yeah. right? So, like, if you like in your carry on, if you have like, oh, because I know we're going to go out to dinner, so yeah. I've packed, you know, these like dress up uh, or like dress to your outfit. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, we're going to all inclusive resort. I'm just going, you know, or whatever my beach cover up. That's yeah. what, you know. So it's just like, oh, your expectation of if we're going out to eat, yeah, I would like us to dress up. Mm-hmm. Although it may seem minor, that could be big because, you know, that's just like frustration. Yeah. But because you're sharing mm-hmm. what is in your carry-on. Like, you already know what the expectation is. Yeah. You have to discuss it. Correct. Um, also, too, on a bigger scale is um, child, children's. Oh, you said child. I'm like... I did say child, but then I was like, I need to make it plural. <laughs> just in case people have, what have more. <laughs> but, like, not talking about a family and what does a family mean in your relationship. Yeah is big because some people who have come from large families, they like, nope, been there, done that. I want a small family, (laughs) if a family at all, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And then also too, is like, uh, yes, I want a small family, but what is small? Because if you come from a big family, your small might be four people, four kids. Four or five, yeah. Exactly. So it's like having, that's why it's so important to talk about those things because like, like I said, it helps you set expectations and well to talk about expectations instead of having unmet expectations Mm -hmm. because if you go in and you both say yes we want to have kids one's from a big family who loved it i can be from a small family and hated it yeah so you're like i don't want so those don't mesh so how is that gonna work 
Okay. So then it was like, yeah, so, but we, but we've talked about it. Cause you're like, oh yes, I came from a big family. I, I, you know, loved it. Mm -hmm. I want to have all the kids. And I'm saying, no, exactly. I want to have a family, but let's just have a couple. So then, but that's when we talk about it and we iron out those things prior to, um, prior to getting married. And so I understand that now some people may still not be buying that family of origin will have an impact on their marriage. Okay. So let's just give a couple scenarios as to how, in addition to the ones we've already done, let's talk about how, um, I'm waiting for the question. <laughs> well, how, how family of origin does impact the marriage. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm going to throw out the area that I feel like um, okay. will be impacted and you come up with a scenario. Oh, you're tripping. Okay. I, I mean, I got I can try. You, I can try. Okay. I can try. All right. So in the area of emotional closeness, how can family of origin have an impact on a marriage? Huh. Um, I guess for one, it's, let me say emotional closeness. So I guess, I guess, I guess not a prime example, but you know, just hugging. Yeah, like if you that's come, what I you oh, okay. It's like <laughs> if you come from a family who are affectionate, that you know, you hug each other, you kiss each other, you know, when you leave, when you come, when you go, like all those different ways, and then you you meet somebody who their family you didn't they didn't have that closeness that mm -hmm. where they always affection they was always hugging. Is that wrong? No. It's just this that's just how they that's just how they actually, I guess, um that was how their relationship was. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's like that. So Yeah, that's a real life example yeah. too. Cause um yeah, emotional close closeness also deals with um like just being verbal. Mm-hmm. And like emotions and yes, like being yeah. able to speak what you're feeling, be able to even have that space, yeah. like given the opportunity, especially as kids, mm -hmm. I didn't have that. Like it was like, you know, kids are to be seen, not heard, you know, <laughs> get out of grown folks business. Yeah. Um, what you're crying for, I give you something to cry about, you know. Um, wow, yeah, you just... Keep... It doesn't take all that, because with the hugging, and stuff, it don't take all that. I don't always have to say I love you, like, <laughs> all that stuff, yeah. So that was me, and Jay's, like, hugging, and I want to talk, and I'm like, what are we talking about? Like, we're going to talk about what we're going to do? Like, let's go somewhere. He's like, no, let's talk about all of the emotions, and I'm just like, do we got to? Like, can I opt out? Like, I nah. opt out certain things? Yeah. Nah. So, but yeah, but so it was just, it, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just something that we had to address mm -hmm. and figure out how to navigate for our relationship. Okay. Okay. So another thing, um, another area is money management. Okay. Oh, so scenario. Yeah, yes. <laughs> oh, scenario. scenario. So... I guess mine is when I was growing up, wasn't taught money management, didn't see how it was until I was in college, actually, when I had to do it myself. Mm -hmm. um, it was always something that my mom took care of. My mom just, you know, like and I've said it before in the podcast before, I didn't actually know until I graduated from college how much my mom made. I'm talking about starting when I was, when I was born up until when I, you know, when she when she finished, actually started years before I was born. When but, she retired. Yeah, when she retired. Oh, I said when she finished. <laughs> when she retired, like her numbers, like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. how did you manage mm -hmm. $26,000 a year, you know? And that's, that, that's when you retired. I was like, wow. So I never really learned that. But on the flip side, my wife, she knew about that. She, you know, she, no, I didn't. I thought you said, like... We, they didn't talk to, us, oh, to okay, me about okay, it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just observed, That's like, what... so my dad would always, uh, so my dad was kind of like, kinda. oversaw, yeah. like, like our finances. Uh, but my mom was actually the person who actually paid them. Mm -hmm. Like, because, you know, physical checks and stuff like yeah. that. 
um, and mailing stuff. Um, but I did see like that dynamic. Um, I knew, I mean, both of my parents worked, but my dad, I guess, would, would be considered an entrepreneur <laughs> because he was a pastor, which was inconsistent mm -hmm. pay and, you know, church offerings and all yeah. the things. So he was like, oh, y'all just take my check. Yeah. I'm like no so yeah so uh but for, because of that it just like that's why i which is weird that i'm a spender now but it made more of a like i have a more of a saving mentality because mm -hmm. it's all about stability for me yeah but that is like i said it's still those, it's still because different of our me. childhood because of our family yeah. of origins is why we were we felt the way we did about money and then we had to come up with our marriage like our joint vision and um, execution of how we were going to do our money management. Yeah, mission statement, all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> so we call this the wedding, family of origin, the wedding edition. So I get to the wedding. Okay. Man, inflation is real, but family is like family and weddings. What is it about family and weddings and wanting all the things and... Gotta, Weddings in general are just to me. Got to show off. Doing gotta, the most. Got to show off. If, you know yes. your side. That's pretty much what it is. Yes. So how does family of origin impact a wedding or the planning of a wedding? It can get out of hand really fast. Okay. Meaning. Uh, you can have people there that you don't even know ah. that you haven't talked to in years, or you you don't even know this person. But yeah, they, they, because they're friends of your parents. Oh, uh, they went to school together. Like yeah, mom, I've never met them. What yeah. are you talking about? So that's that's one. Mm -hmm. um, I guess even the location. You know, it can be a, yeah. a friend or family that owns a. Lo We're gonna do it here because it's you know get a discount, but it's still. Out, out, of the roof. out of your budget. Yeah, still mm -hmm. out of the roof. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm out. What you got? Okay. I, I'm trying to so, think. I have uh, a big one, which is why we uh, did our wedding um, one way. Yeah. Uh, control. Oh, yeah. Because that's true. there's, uh, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't even know, like, what is the correct, like, like what are the rules of the game but it used to be the parents of the bride who are responsible for paying for a wedding like planning the wedding and all mm. the things well there's sometimes where the groom's family yeah it's it's like all the things but it's about control because if i'm playing also too like i love my mom i don't want her planning my wedding like i wouldn't want her planning that for me that moment that day is for me and it's a control <laughs> thing because you're like well if i'm yeah. paying for it this is what we're going to do this is who we're inviting this is what we, you know you know what i'm saying it just mm -mm, makes me anxious like it's, <sighs> control also traditions like cultural cultural and religious traditions mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, we do this, and so you got to do this, and you have to put this in the ceremony. It's not necessarily more so of, like, a cost. Could, these traditions may be low in cost, but the fact that if that's not something that is in alignment with what you and your uh, husband believe or your spouse believe in or want to, you know, do on your wedding day, then you have to be able to say no, right? Yeah. Um, and then... The other thing is just money. Oh, man. It don't grow on trees. It doesn't. And then sometimes you feel like if you're getting, even if you are, even if they're giving gifts. It's not going to it, e equate to. Sometimes it doesn't feel like a gift. Yeah. It's like, oh, you know, you say you're giving us this money, but yet I feel like that came at a cost. Like mm -hmm. it came with ultimatums and it came with strings attached. Yeah. So so yeah. So that's why it's important to understand even the oblig um, the impact that family of origin can even have within. Oh, I forgot. Even like even of the asking, even in the proposal, that can be a thing. Yeah. Because. You know, culturally, some people like, you know, our family origin just be like, listen, I need you to talk to my daddy. 
which I was very traditional in that way. Mm-hmm. But um, and then others, like once you have, once you do accept the proposal, then there's an engagement party. Then there's all of these other like showers and specific mm-hmm. events that have to happen. And that just gets overwhelming. And that is money. Yes. So, so I have to say, do your wedding like you want to do it. Like you two want to do it. It was like, like you, yeah, I, I was about to say, you forgot, you, you forgot me up in there, nah. Like, the two of you Yes, to there it. you go, okay. that's better. Um, because, you also have to keep in mind that it is truly just one day. One day, and it's the start of the rest of your life together. So, if you're, if you, you struggle to, um, if you struggle to set the appropriate boundaries mm-hmm. for your family, yeah. And um, don't understand your family of origin, you will get. To, you can be. You could be starting your marriage off in a, uh, like a set in the back. As far as that is real connection debt is, and debt is real. Well, yeah. Well, not even the connection. Yeah. Because if we've worked so hard to plan the a wedding of our family's dreams, they go home. Yeah, it's about us. We mad or we tired because we were like, oh, you didn't do this right. Yeah. Or we didn't do this. This didn't go off like, mm-hmm. like I wanted to. Yeah. No, you're right. And that's what you're going to remember on your day. Like, yeah. you do not want a big foo-foo dress. You give in to your mother-in-law because you want get to get in on her good side. And you ain't happy. You get the poofiest dress, you have the long veil, and you just look at yourself in those pictures and you're like, I look like a hot mess. <laughs> and that's a negative connotation you have with your wedding. Yeah. Because for for the rest of your life. And your pictures life. and all right. that. Right. And then you can't wait till you get to a milestone uh anniversary so you can have a vow <laughs> renewal. Yeah. So you can do it the way you so want you can do it to. Way, yeah. That's not how that's not what weddings are supposed to be. Yeah. So babe, what do we do? Oh, we did a destination wedding. Yeah. We you had, it had to be you had to be over a certain age. Um, we did adults only. Adults, yeah, adults only. Um, we pay for everything. But why? Um, why we were doing these things? Because we didn't want to go into debt. So, like that was one. Okay. Of, we didn't yes. want to go into super debt, you know. But and we want to again, like you kind of said, control. Yes, we basically ca- cash flowed our wedding. Yeah. Um, we also, Jay comes from a untraditional large family. Mm-hmm. I come from a average family. Yeah. What? You know, three kids, mom and dad. So, um, so trying to, and then also to his family group, not family, his friend group mm-hmm. was much larger than my friend group. Yeah. Yeah. I keep them. I yeah. like to keep my circles tight. Okay. <laughs> but um, that's neither here nor there. Um, but um, so trying to make sure. Okay. Trying to make sure that um, everybody was in the bridal party was just not going to cut it. Oh, yeah. I would have to go find people, find girls to match up to all of this guy. Yeah. I'm not doing all that. Yeah. So yeah, so that's what it was like, and we did. Uh, so that's why we we pay for the wedding, or we pay for the bridal party, like their outfits and stuff, because yeah. we were doing a destination wedding, yeah. and it was all inclusive. So we just wanted them to just focus on their airfare and getting in their hotel res- yep. uh, re- re- reservation. Yeah. Yep. So that um, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't want them to go in debt either, yeah. trying to celebrate our day. Exactly. It's, that was just weird. Mm-hmm. And so we did adults only. Yeah, we because did. We, we did all the favors too. Oh, well, yeah. We we're just talking about the bridal. Oh, okay. Right I was there. like, okay. Um, <clears throat> we did adults only too because I had a few nieces and nephews, and um, Jay had his nieces and nephews, yeah. and then people that were of that age that could be, oh, there'll be a flower girl, I could do this. We, we were not, we're not doing junior bride, we're not doing junior groomsmen. Nope. That's kind of weird, but yeah. sorry if you had that, but. 
I guess that's in my opinion. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we were like, we're not doing all of the things, yeah. all of the traditional things. So that's why we did adults only. Mm -hmm. um, so we wouldn't have to worry about that as well as we did all inclusive because our families, our friends like to party and drink. And so we did not want to go, we didn't want to have to get like the premium catering package somewhere. <sighs> yeah. um, so that's why we were going to do a destination mm -hmm. and we did all inclusive as well as me and Jay are not from the same areas of the U.S. How are you gonna deal with that? Where do you get married? We were not we were not gonna do this. Oh, let's do although this ended up happening against our will. But we were like, we're not gonna do a, a wedding here and do a reception there and all the things. But um but yeah, so that's what we were like we're gonna go somewhere where everybody who really wants to support us They can go. Go and they don't get a vacation out of it too. Yeah. So yes, another thing we did, we did all of like the Party favors, all the yeah, all of the Save things. the dates, Save Every, the dates. everything, yes. any all the paper any stuff. paper stuff we did it. Yes. Uh, meaning like cut it, de designed, designed it, it, tested them out, printed yes. them. Yeah, so yes. we did all of that. Yeah, we did all that. That's when I found out that I could do DIY, and that there was a whole <laughs> like world. Yeah. Of brides who were doing this to save money, um, I don't know if we really save. I, I I guess at the end of the day, we did save money. Yeah. But that was a lot of work. So that's what's like if you incorporate like time, mm -hmm. maybe not. But anyways, <laughs> did all that. Do not regret it. Um, oh, we'll say, I was, uh, well, that was my question. I was like, you regret it now? No, no, no. It was just a lot of work. I just wish no. I would have known how much work and effort would go into it. Yeah. Whatever. Um, beforehand, that I would have appreciated that. Um, another thing um, I will say, this is the one thing that is worth spending splurging on two things you need to splurge on your photography yes we because we had saved so much like where we had saved money in areas where it was not important to us mm. we was able to flow out flew out our uh photographer, photographer. Yep. and the, he was the same person who also had did our uh, engagement photos yep. so like everything was consistent he knew us yeah. so we were able to get the shots we wanted we were able to do trash the dress after the wedding yep. it was just great and those pictures are amazing to this day still to this day. when we look at them yeah. and so that's what it was like <laughs> it's definitely worth getting and paying for a photographer yes. because those pictures you cannot photoshop later you can't you just no, can't you're right. I'm, those are moments that when we see those pictures we immediately go back to that yeah. time how we were feeling yes. how it was apprehensive like yes. even in our engagement photos like all of it it just brings back <laughs> so definitely make sure you don't cut corners on on your photography correct um also make sure you get a good wedding coordinator like if you're our wedding planner, like yeah. if you want somebody who's going to plan it all out for you, they are worth it. As long as you make sure that you see their work, get those references, check the references, because the day of you don't want to as a bride, um, this usually usually impacts the bride more so. You don't want to be worried about anything. You don't want to be worried about timing. You don't want to be worried about how uh, this person is interacting with your bridal party. Yeah, because. This is hospitality, right? So make sure you get a good, reliable wedding coordinator. So the day of, you can be in the moment. It will fly by. You won't remember anything. You think that, especially coming from a planner, and I had a checklist mm -hmm. and all the things, um, I don't remember the particulars about that day. There are certain things I do remember because they're memories. The <laughs> cake. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a disaster, but I, I actually went to the fond memories. <laughs> you oh, went to the negative. That's I'm funny. sorry. I went to, yeah. But yeah, there's things that like the jokes that me and the girls had while we were getting our hair and makeup done. <laughs> like those moments are the things that you need to be uh, focused on yeah. um, the, your, the day of. Oh, I do remember. Wasn't it the day of with the yoga? Yes. Okay. So I do remember that negative. <laughs> Okay, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. That was the planner because I hadn't released it yet. I didn't really release until we got to hair and makeup. But, yeah. Um, but make sure you have a good person, a reliable person, because you want to make sure that um, if anything, ask, because, okay, things will come up. 
you want to make sure that that person's going to be on it like you would do it, yeah. like, or even better than you would do it. And if you don't have that trust or that person has not demonstrated that, um, that to you leading up to your wedding day, be okay with finding someone else and said, ah, I thought that was going to work. That's not going to work. Don't feel stuck in anything. All right. So is there anything else that you want to share about our wedding or things to... I, I honestly, I can't, you know, I can't think of only thing. I guess I can't think of anything. It's more the fact that it's, you know, you kind of control what you want your wedding to yes. be like. Yes, no, you definitely um, control. Even, even if, you know, somebody else is paying for it, it, you have to, like you said, it's about your day. It's mm-hmm. not, like, this is the day you want to remember. And like you said, you don't want it to be where you're, you remembering that day as the worst day in your life. Like, yeah. because again, you're starting a new life with somebody else. So let that day be that joy day that you have. So, right. And that's what it was like. Uh, we're not saying don't make uh, concessions mm-hmm. um, because you will have to. Yeah. You, there are two separate people getting married. Two different in, families. And two different families. Yeah. So there is going to have to be some um, compromise. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure that, uh, the, your wedding, the concept of your wedding matches you you guys' relationship and that, um, you are really doing like you're making sure you're incorporating the most important things of each other so that you can have (coughs) this, um, this merging of families and of you know, yeah, because it's really a mer- weddings, marriages are like the blending of marriage of of families. Mm-hmm. Now, we said all that to say, did we have issues? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Did our families agree with everything we did? Absolutely not. But what we did is that we made sure we were on the same page, yeah. and then as long as we were on the same page, they had to make a choice. <laughs> No, I'm for real. They have no, to I'm laughing because I'm just thinking about some of the. And we were okay with that. We were like, "What are like?" Literally, we had a conversation like, "What are our absolute like things that we do not, we're not going to budge on." Mm-hmm. And we did that, and um, and once we had those few, because it wasn't a long list. Yeah, it wasn't. We had those few things. We had people that we were like, "These people absolutely have to be there." Yeah. Um, and what would we do? Cause we even had a conversation. So if we say that these, 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 these pe- this group of people have to be there, they can't financially be there. How can we make, how can we make sure that they get hit there? Yeah. You know? So we had even set up kind of like, um, a plan yeah. to help make sure, make sure that all our key people would be able to come because we are the ones who were saying we wanted a destination wedding. Yeah. Right. So we figured that out. Um, fortunately enough, we didn't have to do anything, I don't think. No, like because we was we, able to because we let them know well in advance. And on top of that, we had a um, what are they called um, travel travel, travel agent. Yeah. So the travel agent pretty much they yeah handled all that. They handled all of that, and even just made made sure flights landed at the same time and all that stuff. So it was, yeah, so yeah, I don't know why I did that. But um, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so we made sure we had like, these are our dues. These are the things that we, cause like I said, we wanted people to be on a vacation yeah. as well. There were certain things, even within our bridal party, we were mm-hmm. like, Hey, although they didn't adhere to one, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Um, it still all worked out, but it's like, Hey, these are the events that we're having, le- you know, leading up to our uh, ceremony. Mm-hmm. We need you guys to be, to do this, yeah. be at this thing. Y'all have all the rest of the day, whatever, to do whatever. <laughs> but also, it helped, too, like, them plan to plan their vacation. Like, yeah. oh, okay, so I don't need to do whatever. But this is, like, you know, this is, like, the alcohol cutoff time. Mm-hmm. And y'all can start pick, pack, partying back up at this time. <laughs> like, we set all this stuff up yeah. in advance. We had friends who did their own photo shoots on their yes. vacation. So, it was, like... Had a great time. Yeah. Great time. So, yeah, I was, like, we... Uh, but that's what it was like. We just kind of set our guidelines 
And because we set our guidelines, we were able to be a unified front when it came to uh, dealing with our family. Yeah. And because of that, I think it really did. I like our our families truly bonded. Yeah. Well, well they, they had bonded before. They bonded before. But I think but... it was more like our friend group. Yeah. Our friend group and families bonded that yeah. week, that weekend because that was really the first time uh, most of our friends got together. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, our families, our core families, had gotten together, but not our but like not our, our friends. friends. Yeah. Our, yeah, our friend groups hadn't. So, so yeah. So we said all that to say, at the end of the day, it is you two. Oh yep. Do what's best for you. Yeah. And be okay with putting your foot down especially if because i know i have i'm working through this if your boundaries have not been set appropriately with certain family members it's okay to reset them Mm -hmm. today no matter what happened no matter what happened in the past or what things you carried on that you felt like you needed to today's the day Mm -hmm. reset that reset it that is true it's gonna be uncomfortable but you'll get through it and you'll thank me for it later. You'll thank me for it later, I promise you. Okay. So, our advanced marriage tip is, when a man and a woman marry each other, they are also marrying into each other's families. But that doesn't mean that your family has a seat at you and your spouse's table. Wow. So that means... Pretty self-explanatory, I think. Uh, no, that's what I, was, I said. Wow, it, it, yeah. and it's the merging of families. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's you and your spouse at the table making the decisions, being okay with. You have to be okay with what happens at your table. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. My job, just leave it. Like I mean, that. that's it. That's the that literally how we've built. Yes. Our marriage. Yeah. Will be 14 years in December. In December, yep. Wow. So we do know a little thing. Yeah, so. um, How about this? So is there anything else? Yes, there is. I don't know if you guys know this, but we're premarital coaches, (laughs) counselors as well. So if you're looking for someone to help you navigate, um, like, I guess just getting to like know each other and like making sure you set your marriage up on the right foot starting day one actually even before day one Mm -hmm. reach out to us yeah we uh we have a whole assessment we'll walk you guys through we'll have um we'll walk you through like financial um money management um conflict resolution communication talk styles yeah personality personality types yep we talk through it all put it out on the table so that you guys can start off on the right foot. So please be sure to check us out. Um, all the socials, our website, everything has ways for us for you to contact us, as well as in the show notes. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's all I have. Oh, I ain't got nothing else. So mm-hmm. if there's any, if you guys have any um, topics you want us to discuss, you know, DM us, send us a message. Um, we can get on working on those. Um, like, like we said before, just like, like, follow, subscribe, yes. share this with somebody. Um, it is wedding season, so somebody may need this. So um, share this yes, with share, them. Share, share, share. Um, and I guess until next week. Peace. Peace.